Hi, I'm Pat Sullivan of Minitoyo. Many people attribute the birth of modern manufacturing to Henry Ford's invention of the assembly line. But just as important was the advancement of standards and measurement, gaining part-to-part -part interchangeability, as well as minimizing dimensional variation is key part in manufacturing today, as well in Henry Ford's time. Here we have a sample of some of Henry Ford's gauge blocks. He sent this to all his factories as standards and practices. Even though manufacturing has changed greatly since Henry Ford's day, the need for precision measurement remains consistent. As technology advances and miniaturization and accuracy requirements increase, the need for more technical tools and equipment to measure these complex features becomes essential. To achieve goals, metrology companies such as Minitoyo have a variety of products, such as coordinate measuring machines, form measurement, linear quarters, neural systems, optical measurement, sensor systems, small tool instruments and data management, test equipment, vision measuring systems. Today, we're gonna to be talking to some of the key players here at Metatoyo, and they're gonna talk about their careers and manufacturing on the measurement side. So I'm here with Mike Rosenbach, one of our product specialists. I'm gonna kick it over him and let him introduce himself a bit more and go into some details of what he does here. Hello, so I'm the product specialist here for hand tools and sensors, so that's contact and non-contact sensors. So Mike, let me ask you, uh, how did you come about working in manufacturing as a career choice? Was it something that you always knew you wanted to do, uh, was it, or was it just something that just popped up? So I always wanted to do something you know, mechanical or with my hands, so I had um, always thought I was going to be an engineer actually from, from the get-go because I was always taking things apart. So um, I ended up thinking that I was going to go into engineering. I got my associates in engineering and I got my mechanical and uh, wanted to do something that was related to, to that. So now as an adult, you can take things apart and actually put them back together actually again? put them, know how to put them back together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you this, Mike. What do you like most about your job? Uh, what's the most exciting thing? Uh, what do you enjoy? I like all the different applications that every day it's something different, um, you know, trying to find a solution to these customers' applications and, you know, solving their problems uh, with one way or a lot of different ways of doing, you know, of solving these issues. I like, uh, I like solving problems. So uh, how about this? What's the weirdest or most bizarre thing you've been asked to, well, it, to it measure? Had, it had to be raw bacon. Uh, they, were they came in with raw bacon. We were measuring the thickness of the fat, the thickness of the muscle. Yeah, so you weren't able to cook it and eat it afterwards, I don't know. No, but okay. we saw a lot of people come into the, to the, uh, the showroom from all over the, <laughs> the company. So, um, do you have a favorite tool here at Minitoyo? Not really, there's just so many, you know, that's one of the things I like about it is there's so many different hand tools and we're, we're changing things and improving things all the time, the technology or the specs. We have a 5 millionth resolution micrometer uh, that we've had for, for a decade. Um, all the way up to coordinate measuring machines that are using vision attachments, you know, vision sensors or surface roughness attachments to, to do that. So it's really the whole gamut. I like yeah. that. Well, you mentioned the high accuracy micrometer. I think you brought something in that uh, you were going to talk about a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so this is just kind of showing we have a new process for making the, the thread for it. So um, you can see on this side, it's, it's the standard metric micrometer thread, which is uh, half a millimeter. And this actually has a, a pitch that is 0.1 millimeter. So wow. if you look at it though, it doesn't even look like a thread. It looks like it's just a machine surface. But yeah, it really looks like yeah, someone made a mistake and uh, there's no thread there, right, but exactly. there actually is a thread. It's just actually ground down. But yeah, this is a yeah. thread. It's pretty amazing. Wow. So uh, now, what would you say uh, it, for those, those the people out there uh, in the audience that are, are interested in, okay, how, how can I be a benefit of society? W how do you feel like working for a meditorial, working in quality, can actually be a benefit to society? Well, we're really at the core of everything that's being manufactured. So, you know, especially in the last year or two, we've had a lot of medical applications where they're dealing with blood, um, all the way to, you know, quality control is at the core of reducing scrap. So there's a lot less waste with what we're helping to do also in, in uh, quality control. So Mike, you and I have talked before about the importance of quality, the importance of measurement. Uh, you know, there's an old thought process that uh, quality has done something after the finished product, but it's actually something that they should be doing throughout the manufacturing process, right? Absolutely. From incoming inspection, you know, inspection to know 
what the specs of the part are from the get-go to know how you're going to machine it. Um, every aspect of it should be just like, I mean, we, at every step of the way, we're tracking quality from the, the foundry to the final product. We're tracking quality every step of the way. Very nice. Um, now, Mike, what would you say to someone that's looking at manufacturing and, and might be considering working in quality, metrology, or measurement, or whatever you want to call it? Uh, what would you say to, to someone like that is, to, is looking, in, looking into doing, uh, working in manufacturing, or maybe even working in metrology? I, I would recommend it. I think it's a good, stable career, and you know, things need to be manufactured. Uh, so there's a lot of different aspects, a lot of different paths that you can take in it also. And it's really at the core of everything that's that we do, you know. So it's it's throughout uh, throughout society. So it's it's always been stable. It's supported me and my family. Uh, so I would recommend it. Thank you. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, I'm sure the audience has gotten some some great feedback on input on, on metrology and working for Minitoyo. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So I'm here with Curtis Stubbs, one of our sales reps here at Minitoyo. I'm gonna kick it over to him and. Let him introduce himself a bit more and, and talk about what he does here. Hi, my name is Curtis Stubbs, sales representative of Mr. Toyo. Um, been working here for 15 years. My background um, started out in customer service here, and of course, uh, 15 years later, I'm now the regional sales rep here for the company. Very cool. Yes. So uh, let me ask you this, Curtis. Um, you know, audience, uh, the folks watching us are on the younger side and they're looking at manufacturing. Tell me about you. What were you like in high school, and did you ever think that uh, you'd be working in manufacturing when you were older? Uh, to be honest with you, I did not know that I would be able to sit here and be in the forefront of uh, manufacturing. I actually wanted to go into com um, business communications and management and actually start my own accounting firm as a CPA, right, um, coming out of high school. So going into college, it was, for me, uh, minor in psychology and communications and again and continue to work on business management and you know accounting to the point to where hey I got tired of you know getting into the rental car sales businesses and kind of basically get my suits wet and put my resume out there and here I go I look at Metatoyo and Metatoyo come up but the odd, odd part about it was I remember Metatoyo the name in my biology class, we had to do the dissection of the frog. Wow. And I had to use that caliper gauge, and it was a dial, and it was probably 20 of them inside the case at that point. You know, it was 20 of us in class, and we had to sit there and measure and dissect the frog and measure the thickness and read it and write it down and go from there. So when I seen Mr. Toyo, you know, having jobs openings, right? And I was in customer service for data entry. I was like very intrigued, like, you know what? Let's, let's see what happens. I put my foot in the door, and here I am. That's pretty interesting. Exactly. Um, so that gets me to my next question. I mean, so you've you've measured frog parts. <laughs> so uh, what have you measured or an application that you thought was interesting while working here at Meditoyo? Anything come to mind? Uh, let's see. One of them was actually the artificial heart valve to measure the hardness of it, right? Using our micro hardness tester was into a polished sample. And I didn't think that that was very important, but it is, you know, when you're doing surgical components, you don't want to have sure. somebody have a, you know, busted heart valve or yeah. anything, so they got to measure it, certain hardness, and that was pretty cool and very unique as far as me measuring, so that was pretty fun to do. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so I, I know this is a kind of a tough question, um, but how do you feel working with Meditoyo or, or working in metrology or measurement, how do, you, how do you see that as a benefit to society? It's, it's all over the place. Uh, I know Metatoyo Corporation alone, our main motto is good people, good environment, right, and good techniques. And that's what you want in a society in itself. You want to have good people, good environment, and have good techniques that we can all share. So that way uh, we can find that root and cause of a solution right at the beginning versus towards the end when we don't have good people, good environment, and good techniques. So, <laughs> right, right. You know, you think about that, that's good in the philosophy itself, that's good for the society, mm -hmm. right, um, when it comes to Metatoyo and, you know, our products and sharing that knowledge uh, with society itself, so. Yeah. Also, our, our number one function is to reduce scrap, reduce waste, right? And so we're, well, I think we're helping I, the environment that way. I wouldn't even say that's our number one, but I think everybody wants to reduce scrap and reduce, um, you know, a lot of weight as far as, you know, raw materials and stuff like that, right? Yes. So um, that's a universal thing. We just tie ourselves right in the middle of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And try to bring it close to us, right? So 
So let me ask you this, Curtis. For someone who's looking to get into manufacturing as a career, uh, what, what do you see as the positives and, and what, what should they be doing to you know, maybe research it and, and get a better idea of, of, of if it's for them? If you're interested into manufacturing or even curious about it, for me, I wasn't thinking about it until, of course, we go back to that, you know, I was in biology class and I remember seeing the name on the gauge itself. But if you really are interested or you're not sure if there's something you want to do, just go to your local library. That's what I did. That's how I learned it. I was like, oh, inch metric. Oh, I know regular basis of math, right? Currency. Now we're just talking about tenths and millions and, and all that microns. good stuff, right? And microns. I'm not no genius with it, but if you learn the basics, just start there. And once you start there, you build up on it, but never stop learning because um, there's no limit to retaining knowledge. And it's there for all of us for free, especially nowadays where you got all the videos right now going on and all the free material that's out there. And even if you're all bored, you can go to our on-demand and educational website and look at all the free material, just have a registration and sign up and stuff. And even right now, if you're in a freshman or sophomore, high school, even junior high, if you got that access, it's right there for you to yeah. read and just start heads up and just say, oh, you know what? Maybe this is something I can do. Well, thanks for joining us, Curtis. Um, thanks good stuff me. here, man. And we appreciate all you do here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Appreciate it. So I'm here with Donna Booth. She's our showroom coordinator here at our corporate office in Aurora, Illinois. I'm going to kick it all over to her and she can introduce herself a bit more. Hi, my name is Donna Booth. I am the showroom coordinator at the corporate office in Aurora, Illinois. I perform a lot of demonstrations, um, showroom tours, and also do a lot of uh, measuring of the equipment in the showroom. So you wear a lot of hats. I certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> you know a bit about every machine here, pretty much? Yeah, pretty much a little bit about each and every one of the pieces of equipment that Minitario has. That's awesome. So let me ask you this. I, I know you've been working for, how long you've been working here at, at Meditoyo? I've been working here for about seven years. Seven years, okay. Uh, how did you get your start? How did you start working in manufacturing? I was very fortunate. Um, uh, when I moved to Houston, Texas, I applied for a job through a green sheet ad. Um, it was a general office, one to five, and it happened to be at a uh, distributor for metrology equipment called Southwestern Gage. Um, from there, um, I promoted to inside sales full time, and then from there, outside sales working in the field. You, I'm sure you enjoyed being out visiting the customers rather than being on the phone. I, I, oh, absolutely, yes. absolutely. When you get to go to the customers, you get to get to see how things are being made and how critical um, inspection and quality is. Do you have a um a favorite tool or a machine that you you just enjoy talking about or something that you just kind of gravitate towards? Uh, Legix coordinate measuring machine is the my favorite. Um, it is uh, the uh, most accurate CMM uh, that is manufactured and even the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, has one of our machines. Um, what's the most oddest thing that you've ever been asked to measure or weirdest part that you've ever been asked to measure? Well, Patrick, I think the oddest thing that I've been asked to measure is um, on dog food, um, the bags of dog food that you would get at, at the grocery store, there is a uh, lining on the inside that prevents moisture, bacteria to get inside to contaminate the uh, food that's inside of the bag. And we were, we were asked to measure the mesh uh, uh, widths or thicknesses. For those out in the audience who want to look at getting a career in manufacturing, what would you say to them? Um, what, what are steps that they need to take? Uh, and also maybe some encouragement, some things that uh, you find rewarding about working in manufacturing. Uh, my suggestion, recommendation, it's a wonderful career to get started in. It will take you in multiple directions, um, but my recommendation is to get with your local colleges, find out if you have any technical schools that are available to, to attend. Also, learn as much as you can about uh, GD&T, uh, Gauge Dimensioning and Tolerancing, and also find someone that's in the industry, um, in the metrology, and use them as uh, a guidance and mentoring you into learning more and more about the industry. Well, thank you. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes today. 
It's been great talking to you and uh, appreciate it. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Patrick. Oh, all right. Thank you, Donna. So I'm here with John Horvath, one of our field service CMM trainers. I'm going to kick it over to him, let him introduce himself, and give you a bit more details of what he does here. Yeah. Hi, my, hi, my name's John Horvath. Uh, I'm a field service CMM trainer for Mitutoyo. Um, essentially, I, I teach our, cal our uh, CMM technicians how to calibrate equipment, uh, install equipment, and even repair uh, a lot of our CMM product out there. Nice. So let me ask you this, John. Back in high school, what were you into? And did you ever think that you'd be working in manufacturing later in life? No, no, not, not at all, man. I, uh, in, in high school, I wanted uh, to do business, business management. Uh, really? Business, uh, yeah. business management? Business okay. management, man. In the long run, it didn't really work out. And uh, about 10 years ago, I started uh, working in the, in the manufacturing field. What, uh, what got you into manufacturing? What was the, uh, what was the calling that, uh, that really piqued your interest and you, you made that, that call? Uh, we had a, uh, it, on a, not that cool of a story, but uh, <laughs> we, we had a company uh, in my hometown open up uh, called Nippon Sherio. They, uh, they manufactured uh, passenger, passenger rail cars mm. um, in Japan as well as in, in the U.S. Um, I started working there, like I said, about 10 years ago. And uh, while there, I really started to fall in love. I got engrossed with the, uh, the quality side of the assembly of those trains. And about five years ago, uh, there was an opening at Minatoyo in their field service department. And uh, I applied as a field service technician. And over the last five years, I was able to work up to where I'm at now, which is training all of our technicians, like I was saying. Do you have a favorite machine here? I know you work with CMM, so I understand it's your, those are your babies, right? <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So do you have a favorite machine that you've worked with and you, and you just kind of gravitate towards? Yeah. Um, for me, I think the coolest machine that I get to work with is the, uh, the Krista, the EX series. It's got the, the Revo probe on it, and that probe, it has near infinite articulation. It actually articulates to every tenth of a degree, and it's able to calibrate, calibrate stuff at just ridiculously high speeds. How accurate are CMMs, I mean, the ones that you work with? Uh, that really depends uh, a lot on the size of the machine. Uh, for instance, we our Krista AV series, uh, 700 series, well, like 700, a 776. Uh, if it has a SP25 Renishaw probe on it, it, uh, it calibrates to 1.7 plus three or four microns, depending on what temperature environment it's in. How big is a micron? At, to put it in comparison, if you were to pull out a human hair, mm -hmm. the average human hair is about 20 microns uh, thick. So you're measuring to almost a, a tenth of a human hair. So crazy tight crazy tolerance. Tight tolerances. Tolerance wow. is stuff that you almost can't even see with the human eye. So uh, for those out there, or young people who are watching this, and how, how would you explain your career and what would you recommend to them as far as getting started in manufacturing and what, sh what should they really be thinking about uh, when, when choosing a career, especially in manufacturing? I mean, educate yourself as, as much as possible. I mean, I know that, that sounds kind of repetitive, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a wealth of information out there. Um, I personally think YouTube is one of the most underrated uh, sources to educate yourself. You can get trained on how to use something as simple as a, a dial caliper all the way up to basic AutoCAD. You know, from there, once you find something that you're really, really passionate about, start taking all those classes. Um, find the dual elective credits a lot of tech colleges offer and take as much as you can. That way, once you find that dream job, once that Tesla opening you know, pops up, you're like, ah, I want to go there. I yes. want to work for that place. Right. You have all the credit to back that stuff up. Yeah. I mean, and that's the cool thing about our industry. I mean, there's all kinds of great companies that once you get that skill, you can market yourself and get out there and work for a cool company. You can work for SpaceX. You can oh, work for Tesla. Right? I mean, that, those are just two. Those yeah. are just two of our customers right there. You know, we have customers you wouldn't even believe. Uh, Disney uh, Disneyland has one of our manual CMMs for actually repairing yes. uh, some of their rides uh, or for parts that. Uh, yeah, from what I hear, rides. one ride has a just a huge building of support. Yep, with machines, tools. And, and staff. Oh, right? definitely. Yeah. You know, you got, uh, like you said, you got Tesla, you got SpaceX, um, AMD, Snapchat even has one of our vision machines. No way, Snapchat. Snapchat has a vision machine for the Snapchat uh, glasses. Wow. So, uh, working with Metatoyo, working in metrology, would you see what's the benefit to society of working with a, a company like Metatoyo or working in metrology? 
Uh, Pat, there's, there's, there's a ton, man. You know, we have customers that are making so many different parts. I know personally, me, I've installed uh, machines at customers that are, they're making stuff like safety equipment for firefighters. They're making the uh, artificial heart valves wow. for, yeah, for heart valve replacement. Uh, even the, the housings for inhalers and uh, permanent hearing implants too. Wow. Just, just to name a few different things. Thank you. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes today. Appreciate your time. You do an awesome job for us, and I appreciate you taking just a little bit of your time and uh, your busy schedule to, to come talk to us for a few minutes. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Anytime. If you have questions or like more information, please check out our website, meditorio.com, and our YouTube channel under Meditorio America, or any of our other social media accounts under Meditorio America.